All right, this is where we left off in our last video, and I said we're going to take this now to the next level. I have a little extra little dot here. I'm going to go ahead and select that and delete it. Um, I've done this video several times, and it, there are several different little glitches that have happened, so this is absolutely the last time I'm going to make it. I'm trying to simplify this. Um, in my previous video, I said I would curve the edge, and I have done it successfully, but um, then when I try to do it for the video, something weird happens, the program crashes and whatnot. So I'm going to simplify it and instead just bevel the edge. The process is still the same and if you want to try using an arc or a curve you could do that as well. Um, so I'll show you the process. To get started we're going to need to draw a square or a rectangle right at this point. And I'm strategically choosing that point because it's perpendicular to the edge, the outer edge. So at this point, it's perpendicular. So I'm gonna use this point, I'm gonna click here to start my square. And the way SketchUp works is it tries to guess which plane you wanna draw on. Right now I'm drawing perpendicular to the blue axis, which would be on the ground. And I want to draw on this plane here. So looking at it from the side, I want to draw a rectangle and it's hard to even do it. It's not really doing what I want it to do. There we go. I want it to be perpendicular to the red axis. But then it switches to the green and the blue. So in order to lock it into position, whoops, I just created a square I didn't mean to. In order to lock it into the correct plane, you can use your arrow keys. So again, I'm going to start my rectangle right here on the end point. And if I wanted to draw perpendicular to the blue axis, I would click the up arrow on my keyboard and it turns bold blue, indicating now it's locked into that. So I'll be drawing on the ground. So I don't want that, so I'm gonna try the left arrow the left arrow locks it perpendicular to the green axis, which again is not what I want. So I'm gonna try the right arrow, and now I'm drawing, would be drawing perpendicular to the red axis. You can see the red line right there. So this is the plane that I want to draw on. So if you remember in the previous video, the measurement from the inside circle to the outside edge is three millimeters. So I'm going to choose to just create a simple three by three, so three comma three millimeter square. And what I have done successfully, but I'm not going to do right now, is I've used the arc tool, the two point arc, and drawn an arc from one corner to the other, and then click to place it. Make sure that you're drawing on the face, so you could try that if you'd like to. Again, I'm not going to do that. And create an arc instead I'm just going to use a straight line. So I'm going to use the line tool and then just draw a line. I'm actually not even going to go all the way up three because then the bevel is just too extreme. So I'm just going to go down to the midpoint. So now I have my bevel there. I just need to erase the extra lines there. I'm going to go ahead and go to the erase tool, then click on these three lines And then I'm actually going to get rid of everything else except for the very outside line, the edge of the entire fidget spinner. So I'm going to get rid of this guideline and all of these circles. I'm going to get rid of them. Let me zoom out. And don't freak out. This is what is supposed to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these circles. This is just gonna make it more simple in the next step. So the next step, we're gonna introduce a new tool which is called Follow Me. It's found where the push-pull tool usually is. So this is normally what it looks like. Click on that and in the middle of that arc of tools is what's called Follow Me. Now the instructions at the bottom say, click the profile that you want to extrude. I want to extrude this current profile and if you made yours an arc, it should be like a curve shape. 
And then we're going to follow along the edge of this path all the way around till we get back to the beginning. So here I'm at the end point. I'm going to go ahead and click to, fin to finish my shape. So I've done extruding all along that path. So this is my little beveled edge that I'm going to use later on to remove from this fidget spinner. The next step I need to do is make sure that this is a solid. So to do that, I'm going to use the select tool, draw a big box around it, make sure everything is blue selected, then two finger tap on a Chromebook or right click on a mouse, and then choose make group, which puts all those faces and edges together into one solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it is a solid by clicking on the entity info and it says solid group. Now I want to copy this. I want to copy it and I'm going to use it to remove from the top edge. So in order to copy it, I also want to rotate it so I can use it. So right now it's upside down if I were to use it on top. So I need to rotate it and copy it. So we have used the rotate copy tool before. I'm going to go ahead and find that. I'm going to choose a spot strategically right here at the base of this beveled solid right here on the end point. I can rotate it and it will be the top of it will be at level zero since this is on the ground level. So let's go ahead and grab that rotate tool. Here's the rotate tool. I'm going to press control one time. Make sure you have that plus symbol, which means I'm also going to copy it while I'm rotating it. And I want to make sure that I am in on this surface, which there isn't a flat surface here. So it's really hard to just select it. So I'm going to use my arrow key. This time I'm going to use the left arrow to be perpendicular to the green axis. And I want to make sure that I'm on the right spot. So I'm going to click on the end point right here at the base. So I've clicked to place my rotate tool. Now I need to grab anywhere in space and then just start rotating it. Now I want to rotate it 180 degrees. I'm going to type 180, enter. Now I've copied it and rotated it. And the top of that new object is at level zero. And in my, on my fidget spinner, I'm going to go ahead and take the tape measure because it's been a while since I drew this. So I'll just make sure from the bottom to the top, we go all the way up on the blue axis, is seven millimeters. Now I've had a couple just little glitches happen. So what I'm going to do is on purpose, I'm going to raise it up just like 7.1 millimeters to make sure that the two surfaces aren't sharing space. So I'm going to go ahead and use the move tool next. And I still have that bottom one selected. See the bottom one that's supposed to be at the top. So I'm just going to click this anywhere and make sure I'm drawing along the blue axis. If I want to, I can just use the up arrow to make sure that I'm locked into the blue axis, just moving it straight up. Then I'm going to type 7.1, enter. So slightly higher than seven millimeters. And hopefully this will work out. Next thing I need to do is make sure that my original fidget spinner is one complete solid. So right now I'm gonna use the select tool and you can see this is all faces. If you look at the entity info, these are edges and faces and curves and circles. So this is not a solid at all. So what we need to do is combine all these by selecting them. I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle around all of this. Make sure everything is nice and blue. Then I'm going to two finger tap or right click and then choose make group. So you should see here, now it is a solid group. Everything has been combined into a solid. 
Now we can switch over to the solid editing tools, which is somewhat new for us as a class. We've used the first two options here. Oh no, that's not it. Sorry. Here they are. You're looking for this group of tools. The first one is an outer shell. The second one is unite. Those are union. Those two combine solids. We want to subtract our solids to kind of sculpt the edge. Before I do that, I need to move my solid on top of the other. So let me go ahead and select the top solid. I'm going to use the move tool. And in the previous video, we moved this along the red axis. So make sure you're locked into the red axis. And then we moved it 100. So type in 100 and then enter. So it should be right over the fidget spinner. Now I'm just going to try this, and this is where things sometimes go wrong, but let's try it. Hopefully I'll be successful. I want to use subtract. I'm going to select the object that I want to subtract, which is the item that is already selected. So if there is nothing selected, the first thing I would select is the top bevel. Then the second solid would be the fidget spinner. So I just clicked that. And you can see our nice result here. We've beveled the edge. So we used one solid to sculpt or remove material from another solid. So we successfully did the top. Let's see what happens to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and now use the select tool and move to my bottom bevel. Use the move tool. Grab it anywhere. Make sure I'm going along the red axis and then type in 100. Enter. So now that's been placed on the same area as the fidget spinner. Now I need to go back to the solid editing tools and make sure I'm on subtract. I have already selected this bottom one so I'll go ahead and deselect so you can see how that works. You select the thing you want to remove first. Then you select what you want to remove from second. And here I have an issue. This is what I was, the issue I was having before. So I have some holes in here because the two surfaces were overlapping and it didn't know which one to keep. So I'm going to go back one step. And what we're going to do is move this down just 0.1 millimeters, just slightly, so the two surfaces are not overlapping. So I'm going to use the, oh, actually first let's select it, select the bottom solid there, click on the move tool, click anywhere on it, and I'm going to move down, so make sure you're locked into the blue axis, you can use the up arrow to make sure you are, make sure you're going in the downward direction, and then type 0.1, enter. Now we're going to go try this again. Go back to the solid editing tools. Make sure you're on subtract. I'm going to deselect just to show you the process again. This is the first one, the, the material you want to remove that is selected first. Then the object you want to remove it from is selected second. This looks promising. Yes, I think we successfully did it. Let me go ahead and just double check by clicking away from the object and then selecting the solid. And it is a solid group. So this is a printable object. So I could export this into a slicer and then turn it into a G code and then print it. So this is meant to challenge you from taking it from a simple two dimensional push-pulled shape, which is a basic 3D from a 2D object, and actually getting into sculpting, modifying one solid using another solid. So hopefully this has been fun and you've learned something new. So uh, give it a try. If you feel up to it, try it with a curve and see if you can make a curved edge. That's it.